Hello and welcome everyone to what is already the fifth SGL live session. Uh, it's been a while since you've seen us, but we're happy to be back again, which with what I believe is a is a great topic and especially a great panel of experts again. Uh, I would like to give a very warm welcome to Mr. Jürgen Mutz, Stadium Manager for, of the Allianz Arena in Munich. Welcome, Jürgen. And also a very well warm welcome to Stuart Wilson, uh, Pitch Manager at Croke Park Stadium in Dublin. Stuart, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thanks, Ryan. Welcome. And of course, Javi, Daniel, our Area Managers. Javi, Area Manager for Latin countries. You've been here a few times. It's great to have you back. Yeah, pleasure to be back, Frank. And Daniel, our area manager for the Asia Pacific, your first ever SGL live. And what a topic and what a, a group of experts. Nice to have you here. Thank you, Frank. Nice to be here. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we've got a, a, a packed program today. Uh, as you've seen on social media and the invitation, our main topic today is LED and uh, sustainable pitch lighting in general. Uh, a very interesting topic, a very hot topic, which we uh, discuss uh, many times with you, our customers, uh, and which always gives a very good discussion. Uh, so with the experts that we have in today, I, I think it will be a great session with some uh, great content and discussions. Uh, just to quickly run you through the today's agenda, we'll start as always with a, a social update going around the social media channels in the industry. Then uh, Daniel will give you a uh, short presentation on uh, LED and sustainable pitch lighting and an introduction on the topic uh, that gives us some nice food for thought and some nice uh, topics to discuss. And then before we head into the panel discussion, we have a this or that with uh, Jürgen Moot. Some quick questions to him that he has to make up his mind. Uh, and then uh, it gives us a nice introduction into that panel discussion. Uh, after the first half of the panel discussion, it's uh, Stuart's time to uh, answer a few tough questions on this or that. And uh, then we will continue the panel discussion again. Like I said, it's it's a hot topic. It's it's a, a much discussed topic. So uh, we've provided enough time for a discussion today on that specific topic. Uh, but we also want to leave uh, enough time at the end of the program for a, a very special behind the screens, a pitch visit at the uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, iconic stadium already. Uh, head groundsman Gary Lee will give us a short tour. Uh, you can see it as a, as a preview to, to our masterclass uh, 2020 uh, that is actually being held in March 21. Uh, we all know the reasons. We were hoping to have that uh, done last March, um, but unfortunately due, due to uh, the COVID situation, that was not possible. We're still hoping to do it now in, in March 21, uh, but Gary will already give us a little preview of this fantastic stadium. Uh, at the end, we will finish with a, a short summary and then we will say goodbye to everyone after what has hopefully been a nice uh, session with lots of uh, uh, interaction. About that interaction, uh, you will see that in the bottom of your screen, there's some buttons. One of them is the Q&A button. If you have any questions to uh, the panelists, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, and then we will get your questions and we will address them either live during the meeting. That's definitely what we will try to do. Uh, but if we don't manage, we will always answer your question afterwards personally. So feel free to ask any questions and, and get that discussion going. Excellent. Then let's get started. Here we go around across social media. We've got Carl Stanley from uh, the home of English football, Wembley Stadium. Uh, as you can see, and what we see a lot on social media, the lighting season has started again. So we see lots of LU440s and other lighting rigs coming out again, uh, which is always a nice sight. Uh, you can see that Carl leaves, leaves no stone unturned. Uh, with, he's got the latest technology, uh, the LU440 equipment, and uh, help from a lot of LU120s and, and other uh, tools as well. And on top of that, uh, I noticed only yesterday that he even hired uh, a groundsman with the last name Sonny. So you can tell that he leaves uh, nothing untouched. 
And what we also see, which is a very nice thing, is the BU10. Uh, we've mentioned it a few times already, introduced a few months ago, and now also making its way into uh, golf. Uh, so we see here Richard Mullen uh, uh, showcasing it and using it on one of his greens. Uh, it's great to see that now uh, the world of golf is also exploring the benefits of the SDL system. So uh, very good. Another interesting development that we see in the US is that, again, there the discussion has uh, started, and I think now stronger than ever, on, on the health uh, for, for players of, of uh, artificial grass and the, the, the screen to move to, uh, to natural grass. Obviously, that's a move that we all support, so it's interesting to follow that discussion. And then this Javi, thank you very much. Javi installed. Uh, two brand new LU 440s and uh, some LU 120s and MU 50s uh, last week at Valladolid and made this beautiful picture. Uh, we'll touch on this later. Uh, the, the fact that you see in Spain as well uh, already that they're using the lights now. Uh, I think this is just a, a very nice picture with the, the purple uh, seats and uh, the, the drop of light. Very nice, Javi. Well done. Well, that's uh, because of the help of Antonio, the head ground runner. Eh? Very good. To be honest. And this is also a very interesting one. I cannot read all of it, uh, but this is in uh, Qatar, Albaid, one of the uh, World Cup stadiums, where they have also already started using the, uh, the lights, the LU 440s. Uh, what I said already, what you can see in Spain and also here in Qatar, that we see that given the circumstances, given the, the grass species that are used, given the uh, stadium situations, there is a need for, for light and also heat already in, in these stadiums. So it's great to see also a glimpse of, of uh, the 2022 World Cup. And then this, uh, it, not only lighting season has started in some parts of the world, Europe, uh, rainy season has started as well. This is Edgbeston in, in Birmingham. Uh, well, basically there, their rainy season runs from early October until end of June. So guys, we wish you all the best uh, with in the coming 10 months with your, uh, your rainy season and hopefully we uh, can help you out with uh, the lights a little bit. And then this uh, one finally, a very nice one, Men United, Old Trafford, iconic stadium. Uh, Simon, our area manager for the UK and US has been there last week to install uh, nine brand new LU440 flex units. Uh, Tony, uh, head groundsman at Man United, has always been using the MU360 flex units, custom built for Man United. He loved them, uh, but uh, after a few years ago trialing the, the LU440 system, he was impressed by the practicality, the ease of use, and, and the, the design of the rig. So uh, it took a while, but now finally he's uh, been able to swap his uh, MU360s for flexes. So Tony's happy. Uh, but maybe with the uh, refurbished MU360 rigs, we can almost also make some other grounds happy. So they are available. Excellent. That was a nice round of uh, social media. It's, it's nice to see also that activity with, with the games and, and uh, the lights being back on, uh, coming back. Uh, so uh, very good developments. Then now we move on to the next thing, and that is the introduction on LED and sustainable pitch lighting by Daniel. Daniel? Floor is all yours. Thank you, Frank. Uh, very nice to be here. Be here finally. I've hassled you for for uh, weeks to get yeah. on on the show, and finally yeah, you've uh, well, let me say. So. A thousand dollars helped a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, no, pleasure to be here, and uh, really looking forward to hearing from our guests uh, a bit later. Um, great, great panel. So, obviously, today we're going to talk about LED and sustainable pitch lighting, um, a subject we could spend hours and hours talking about. Uh, for now, I'm going to try and breeze through some quick information and then uh, get to our guests. So LED technology we'll touch on um, really is a hot topic right now um, for, for obvious reasons. Uh, lighting hour and time management optimization. Um, so really using data from your pitch to, um, to be more energy efficient. We'll get to, to that in a bit more detail as well. And obviously energy source um, at the forefront of most people's thinking these days with, with green and renewable energy. So. Uh, we'll get to uh, get to that a bit later on as well. LED technology, obviously, um, a hot topic right now. Everyone seems to be talking about it uh, for good reason, um, and we're seeing many stadiums around the world um, looking into this technology. As you can see, a nice image here from Allianz Arena, and we'll speak to Mr. Mooch shortly. Uh, typically, a, a high high light output, uh, low energy use. 
Um, LEDs radiate very little heat to the surface um, as opposed to HPS, hence why we use uh, infrared lamps with our LED units. Uh, that really uh, gives you the ability to control the light and the temperature independently, um, which essentially makes these units really versatile and adaptable to, to many different climates. So they can work in, in the very cold, but also in, in hot, humid climates. Um, the light spectrum that we decide to use has, has been researched for many years together with our partner Philips, um, researched in labs, but also in stadium environments. And, and we're very confident um, that this light spectrum uh, creates optimum conditions for, for grass growth. I think especially, Daniel, like you said, the versatility, Mr. Moot will touch on that later as well, is what we have found, maybe a bit unexpectedly, uh, but what we have found to be one of the key uh, benefits of this new, uh, of, or of the LED technology. So uh, I, I think that's a, a very interesting insight. Absolutely. So. Yeah, the, as you mentioned there, Frank, the balance between light and temp temperature really is the key. Um, and that uh, ability for, for LED units to, to control the light and the infrared separately. Um, obviously, in, in warm climates with low light, we can see really elongated uh, wheat growth, which is certainly not what a stadium manager wants. Um, obviously, then without the infrared in, in very cold climates, um, the light can mean very little if, it, if it's too cold. So really, um, as you mentioned, versatile, that, that that can be controlled independently. Um, obviously, with our LED units, um, they are sensor-based, so um, oops, heat, temperature, wind sensors, um, so that, that um, you can really set parameters for those lights based on data rather than just turning the lights on or off. So um, quite a bit more technology into to the LED uh, infrared um, situation. Is LED the, the sustainable choice? Well, that really depends on, on the additional heat that's required. Um, and that can be you know, a climatic decision or, or just your general um, stadium situation. But we can certainly see, um, we, we underestimate the importance of, of heat. Um, certainly in dry, humid, uh, hot climates where little to no infrared is needed, generally energy consumption is quite a bit less than that of HPS. Um, so perhaps it's a um, more of a discussion, but certainly in, in those really cold climates, the, the added heat means that energy consumption is often not um, less than that of, of HPS. Um, our R&D development team are, are doing lots of work and have done lots of work on the use of that infrared and the spread of the infrared uh, on a grow light. And um, you know, it really at times is underestimated, I believe. Yeah, I think it, in many, many situations, LED can be uh, the most sustainable choice. Um, there will be situations where you use more heat, which uh, is, is, for example, the case in, in the Allianz Arena. We'll discuss that later. But uh, I also think it's, it's crucial here to, and what I always say that, and, and what I see happening a lot in the industry, that sustainability is, is uh, confused with cost savings. And obviously, sustainability is about using... Uh, less power in this case and uh, it's it's not necessarily cost saving so, sometimes and often it goes hand in hand uh, but we really need to yeah see that sustainability is is a is a separate different thing nice segue there frank uh, and and as you mentioned is led the the economical choice well obviously uh, running costs is is certainly considered but uh, investment costs need to be considered also and as we know uh, the investment costs of an LED system is, is far greater than that of, of HPS. Uh, often running costs can be quite a lot less, um, but that really makes it a decision that's separate to every single stadium, whether, whether that's the most economical choice for you. Uh, maintenance, obviously, another um, point to, to think about, and perhaps there's a perception that HPS bulbs need to be replaced far more often, so they're more maintenance um, unfriendly, I guess, but even LEDs, are, um, the engineering around an LED unit is quite a bit more. Um, that's, that's also very debatable. So um, as far as is it the most economical choice? Well, again, it really depends on, on each individual situation. We often hear, hear about HPS versus LED and, and certainly from an SGL standpoint, we don't see that as the case. Um, we certainly see that both technologies can be used side by side. Um, We'll hear from Gary at Tottenham a little bit later where 
they have a full 100% uh, LED indoor um, situation and also their HPS outdoor um, and both technologies working theoretically side by side in different microclimates, but giving them the perfect, um, perfect scenario. The middle image there of the Allianz Arena and Mr. Moot will go into a bit more detail, but um, a bit roughly 25% of the pitch with LED lights. Um, and again, that really versatile for them where they can use the LEDs in, in the warm summer without infrared, but coming into very cold winters using the infrared to their, their full ability. So um, they really have that nice mix there of both technologies. And we certainly see in many customers' situations and, and, and a beautiful photo there of the Hong Kong Stadium where um, customers are, are using a HPS system for you know, large areas of the pitch and, and using that LED and infrared in, in the high use areas um, where there's high, high wear. So yes. we, yeah, we certainly see, sorry, Frank, we certainly see uh, both technologies um, you know, working side by side and, and working very well. And, and that's an interesting one as well. The, the last one, you see that uh, there over, over there, the LED 35 at Hong Kong, like you say, Daniel, high wear areas. Uh, we often see that uh, you don't start using in, in a European uh, climate, you don't start using all your lights uh, at the same time uh, at one moment. Uh, no, you usually start with, with uh, small lights in the high wear areas or, or the high shade areas. Uh, this also proves uh, an ideal way of, of doing that with, with LED, uh, having the infrared to either help you out or not, uh, leave, it, leave it off and, and use it without heat. So that's a great thing. I think, uh, Daniel, what, what, you, what you touched on already is, is, what is absolutely crucial is that it's not black and white. And it's, it's not uh, to say, with HPS, it was always uh, relatively simple in a way. You needed to do an analysis of the stadium, shade analysis, and then you knew exactly what was needed. Uh, with LED, uh, it becomes much more complicated and much more a, a custom solution. And I see, like Daniel said already, it's, no, uh, it's not that we see it as LED replacing HPS or whatever. No, uh, they, they each have their own uh, benefits and, and, and disadvantages as well. So that's, that's the way we see it. It really needs more than ever a specific solution and calculation for every, every stadium or training ground. Yeah, absolutely, Frank. So going a little bit uh, laterally from, from light source, um, talking about light hour and time management optim optimization, uh, we certainly have seen in many situations uh, customers using the SGL portal um, and using the data from their pitch to maximise efficiency. So using the data to determine when lights should be on or off um, rather than typically just turning on the lights for the sake of it, um, really using that uh, lighting hour um, recommendation to, to, like I said, determine when and where the lights go on. Um, also taking peak and off-peak rates into account, perhaps something that uh, people may overlook, uh, but we've certainly seen examples of, of customers um, using those off-peak times to their advantage and, and essentially saving quite a bit of uh, money in energy usage. Yeah, this is also something, if I might, may give an example, uh, and, and this is quite crucial because we're talking about sustainability and LED and LED could be a, a real solution to a more sustainable operation of pitch lighting. Uh, but what we always say, regardless of the light source, whether it's HPS or LED, uh, this is crucial using data to optimize your lighting hours. Just as an example, Arsenal have been doing that uh, over the last few years by really focusing on, on optimizing based on, on the data they were receiving uh, on their pitch. Uh, and they've managed to make savings up, up to 30% without losing quality. That's the great thing. So uh, there you see that even with LED uh, and HPS, that same saving uh, could have been made. They did it with H HPS, but that's crucial. So regardless of the light source, uh, it's, it's really crucial to, to focus on optimizing the lighting hours based on, on the data that's available to you. And perhaps the, the last point when talking about sustainability is, is obviously the energy source. Um, and we see in many stadiums around the world now, uh, stadiums looking to renewable or green energy. Uh, lovely photo there of, of Bremen in Germany with their solar panels. Um, really significant energy savings can be made with, with renewable energy. Um, and it's certainly something that, uh, that should be investigated in each situation as well. 
that's uh, that's a very very quick um, overview of of LED and sustainable pitch lighting. It's it's a great subject and something we could discuss uh, for hours. But uh, I think it's best if we get to our guests rather than me dribbling on too much. Excellent. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, I do indeed think that that provides a nice introduction and and some nice basics to to start our discussion. Um, so thanks for that. Uh, very interesting. And uh, well, we'll move on with the discussion. But before we do that, obviously, uh, it's time for our first this or that with Mr. Jurgen Muth. <laughs> first of all, um, thank you very much for the introduction and, and also for the, for the partnership. Uh, yeah. um, I, I think we worked together since uh, nearly uh, 15 years. It's a, yeah, it's, a, it, it's a lot of time. We know each other for a long time. And four, four years ago, we, we think over LED and we, we tested it the uh, whole year of uh, 2017. Yeah. We, we enlarged uh, this test in, in 2018 and since we, we work with it very well. And yeah. what was some motivation to, to take um, LED in, in, in the Allianz Arena? Uh, first of all, it is a quality of the pitch. This was a, the main topic, not sustainability, not any uh, cost saving um, uh, effects. We, we want to make, uh, want to have more flexibility with, with, with our lighting. Yeah. And, and so we, we have a chance in the warm season to, to use uh, the lights without um, additional uh, temperature. We have a second chance in the warm, in the, in the cold seasons yeah. to use it with additional uh, uh, heating. And we, we can do more heating than with a, with, with a conventional light. It's, it's also an, an advantage. And last but not least, uh, we have a possibility to, to change uh, the wavelengths of, of, of the light, yeah. to, to use it uh, individual. And, and Daniel said it before, uh, to control the light and temperature independently. I think that this is a, the main advantage yeah. of LED uh, to, to con conventional light. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you for that, uh, that introduction. Uh, thank you also for joining us. Like you say, uh, we have quite a history. You were one of the first stadiums uh, to embrace the, uh, the SGL technology and, and now uh, also one of the first to embrace the L uh, SGL LED technology. So it's great to have you here. Uh, we're going to into that discussion uh, uh, shortly. Also with Stuart, I would like to hear his views as well because he's in a bit of a different situation at Croke Park in Dublin. But before we do that, Mr. Moot, I really have to ask you a few this or that questions first. Uh, the rules are simple. You have to choose. Uh, you cannot explain anything. Maybe later on I give you a chance to explain one, one or two uh, questions. Uh, there has to be one choice. So uh, we, uh, if you are ready, we can get started. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, then here we go. Minus 10 or plus 30 degrees. You have both? Yes. Which one do you choose? Plus 30. Plus 30, okay. Then, uh, well, this is also something familiar to you. To a lot of us, it's not. But winning the Champions League or winning the World Cup? Yeah, winning Champions League. Champions League, okay. You choose Bayern Munich. This is an interesting one. LED or HPS? <laughs> LED, of course. LED, okay. We'll discuss that later. A very important one, beer or wine? Oh, I drink both. But, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but first of all, beer, yes, okay, beer. Good. And then, sorry, Javi. Come on. I had to ask this. Mr. Moot, beating Barcelona <laughs> eight in an empty camp now or beating Barcelona 1-0 in a full Allianz Arena? 1-0 to zero in a full Allianz Arena. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Moot. Sorry, Javi. Sorry, Javi. I had to, with someone from Barcelona, that's, we had to address it. Sorry. That's not fair, Frank. Oh, no, that's right. <laughs> we stop it now, yeah? I promise. I think. Okay, good. We continue. Mr. Mood, data or instinct? Oh, it will be instinct. Okay, good. Interesting. Interesting. And then that was the final one. So thanks for that. We might uh, come back to a few ones uh, later on. Uh, I think the data or instinct is a, a very interesting one. We don't need to discuss anymore about uh, beer or wine or 
uh, that one Barcelona thing I forgot about already. But uh, I think definitely the uh, the LED one uh, is an interesting one. Um, let's get into the discussion now. Stuart, uh, welcome. Great to have you here. Thanks, Frank. Uh, you, uh, can you give a quick introduction on, on, on Croke Park and, and your sustainability, award-winning sustainability achievements? Yeah, so the stadium um, it would be yeah, one of the world leaders in sustainability. So we've got um, they've uh, numerous awards, I, ISO awards um, throughout the years. So huge, huge into waste management. They've got um, zero, um, basically, um, landfill. No, no waste goes to, uh, to, to landfill at all. So it either goes to sort of re renewable energy sources. Um, everything's composted. Plastic is recycled. So um, uh, there's all different types of energy um, and water management in the stadium. They, um, uh, the energy is saved massively with LEDs around the stadium. Um, they've got a huge amounts of um, water savings. Everything is censored. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it, it, the stadium is massive in, in sustainability. So um, uh, as a pitch manager, I have to basically follow suit with that. So um, one of the big parts of that is we've, we've just bought ourselves, well, it's been sort of a couple of years now, at our, our own turf farm. Um, so we're producing our own turf um, to save on huge tran transport costs of turf coming over from the from the UK. Um, so yeah, the stadium, it, it, it's massive into sustainability, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what, what, what do you like the most about using LED lights? And I think you both, uh, Mr. Muth, and you have uh, done some uh, university research Yes, yeah, so we've what's the result yeah, about that. Yeah, we've we've spent um, uh, the stadium um, was starting to develop into into a st smart stadium, and um, so one of the big parts of that was how how can the the pitch be involved in this? So we we um, partnered up with the local university, Dublin City University, and um, one of the one of the parts of that was actually that they were given the sort of remit the role of. Of looking into LED lighting, um, there wasn't really a huge amount sort of on the scene um, in you know sort of LED lighting with you know with, with pitches, and so they they were set the task to, to really find probably what they could be the best LED light out there to grow grass. Um, so they spent a good good amount of time researching that, and then set up all sorts of lab trials, um, which then moved from sort of labs into pitch trials and then we looked at results um, everything was very controlled in the labs um, temperature controls which obviously is is massively different when you're when you're in a live sort of pitch environment so it's uh, it progressed sort of slowly and we moved on to then what we found was that or they found that, that they got an led light that could actually compete with and that was one of the big parts of it was actually to compete with HBS technology. So, and we we ended up finding something that we were very very pleased with and would compete with with HBS. So, the developments went on. But then, obviously, with with you know a lot of what Daniel said there, that with LEDs, um, uh, the the temperature control was a big problem. Um, we also found that you know the size of the rigs, you need more bulbs. Um, uh, so heavier rigs, uh, so it, it's hard to compete with the HBS when it comes to the size of the rigs. Um, but we, we had some fantastic results with, with LED lighting and I, I, I firmly believe that there is a future for it. Yeah, I think what you, what you just touched on, uh, Stuart, is that indeed, I think SGL, we started our LED research, I think maybe 10 years ago or even before that. And at first the focus was really on uh, getting to that same micromole levels as HBS. Uh, being able to achieve that, that, that was the first uh, six to eight years, really the target. And, and when we achieved that, we saw, okay, there's, there's more things to it. I think Mr. Mut, you started also a few years ago. I remember you telling us uh, SGL, it was nice to work with you with HPS, but we are moving on to new technology. Uh, we're testing with the University of Munich. Um, and then Nico said, well, that's fine, but let us be involved. And, and because we were doing research already and for a long time. So then we uh, developed the LED 200 and you did a lot of testing, right? Yes, we did a lot of testing um, also with, with our university. And, uh, and our target was to, to enlarge the times we can use our light. Because uh, the last years we have more problems in, in the hot times. 
than, than in the cold times. Uh, the first years without any lighting, uh, we were afraid if, um, to the winter because you know we, we play not only national, we all we play all um, international um, uh, games. And, and so there were a lot of times we can't change our pitch. And so it was very good in this time between November and, and February, March, to have a, a pitch you, you can play every match on it and you have not to be afraid that the pitch had so much damages that it will influence uh, uh, the game. So now we, we wanted to make the next step and the next step was logical um, LED. And we tested with, with the university um, more than one year. And then with you, SGL, um, I think nearly 18 months until we decided to, to buy it. Yeah, and that was also in two different periods, right? Where you, you tested in, in hot times, in summer, I believe, but also yeah. in, in the middle of winter. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, really and interesting, Mr. Moot, that uh, often people talk about being more energy efficient when, when describing or talking about LED, but your, your motivation was more about pitch quality rather than, than energy efficiency. Absolutely, number one was pitch quality and not so sustainability. I, I think actually after COVID, my next topic is sustain, sustainability in my, in, in, my, in my work time. But uh, overall, it is, it is important to make good sports and you can make good sports with, with a good pitch. And, and, and so it, it was a focus number one to get the best pitch in the German Bundesliga. Mr. Yes. Muth, uh, one of the questions that the, the audience may think about is, you are so happy with the LED units. Why does the Allianz Arena has a mix system with LED okay. and HPS? Yes. Um, okay. First of all, we, we, we talk about costs. Um, we have a very good uh, uh, conventional system and, and we, we changed it, I think, five years before. And so everything is working fine. And our focus was on, on the months um, September and also May, May. This month will be too warm to, to the conventional light. And we have only um, uh, a part of the pitch where we have problems without light. It is in the south of our Allianz Arena. So, for us, it is okay to use this four rigs we, we buy it with LED and to use it in the south in, in the time May or, or, or September to end later and, and to begin earlier with its lighting. Perfect. Stuart, um, uh, Jürgen Mut just, just mentioned specifically that for them, pitch quality was key. Um, funny enough, I think when we did the LED development, a lot of it was focused on sustainability and still is. And I think there are still uh, sustainability reasons definitely to go for LED in, in some situations. Uh, but at the same time, we see with the Allianz Arena and we see also with uh, Peter Sauer at Wolfsburg, who has also adopted uh, the LED technology. He also said uh, and still says uh, what mainly impresses me is, is the additional quality I can achieve by balancing that heat and um and, and light. Uh, how do you see that? You've been testing quite a few systems. You've been testing also our LED uh, 35. What was your impression on, on, on the pitch quality and the results you got there? Yeah, so with the, uh, with the LED, we it, obviously the size of the rig, we, we're concentrating on the, the high wear areas. So we've got the MU50. So we, we did comparisons with the, with the two lights. So um, two in, um, you know, very, very high wear areas and the results um, uh, were actually quite considerably different. Um, we found that the LED, um, we had much better results with it um, compared to the MU50. Uh, the, the difference again is that because of the sort of versatility that the LED, if you need if you need that heat, you may be looking for some even some C germination as well. Do you know, so um, you've got that added heat that you can put on um, with the LED with the with the MU50, you know, you're having to move it a little bit more as well. So um, we found 
we found the results actually to be yeah, considerably different um, in the two and the LED um, for the high wear areas, um, like Daniel touched on in his presentation, uh, they work very, very well. Will your event schedule then, Stuart, um, determine a des decision down the track? Obviously, you have a, a very heavy event schedule there at Croke Park. Is that yeah. does that play on your mind with making a decision on on what system to go with? Yeah, it's, it, I think it, it, it certainly would do. But um, I think that you know we we would have more downtime in sort of the the deeper winter months um, that changes this year because our season's completely changed. So we've got a heavy schedule coming up um, right through through the winter. But um, our standard season. We sort of have more downtime in the uh, in the winter. So um, I, with the what we would target in the in those quieter times is we're actually looking at more sort of the, the, the actual moles that we're getting onto the pitch. Um, we're not looking at um, sort of turning the lights on for a certain amount of hours. Um, and we would be we would actually drop our moles because we're, we're actually just really looking to, to keep the pitch ticking over. Um, we haven't got matches. We haven't got the pressure on for games. So um, I think, you know, with the decision on the type of lights that, you know, we're looking to upgrade to, the big problem we have with obviously Pro Park is the pitch size. So um, it's a huge pitch. Um, with LEDs, you... Uh, yeah, we, we've seen fantastic results, but the problem you have is that we would have to have so many lights. And I think it'd be the same if you're in a soccer or rugby stadium as well, that um, the amount of lights you require to um, to cover the same area that you're looking at with with HPS is is, is a lot more. So, the, you know, the costs um, are going to be significant, the actual, you know, the outlay um, of buying the rigs. Um, so I think, you know, the results that we've found, um, even though we've had, you know, very good results with, with LEDs, that we wouldn't be able to actually afford to buy so many rigs, you know, to, to, to cover the area that we're looking for. So I think we'd be looking at the same as um, what you're going to be doing and there'd, be, there'd certainly be a mixture of the, of the two. Yeah, I think, sorry, Chavi, go on. No, I, I like to, to ask a question. How how often do you more or less use the infrared light in your stadiums? We it, it purely depends with us um, just using the um, the thirty five on temperatures. Um, uh, so the we 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 have it set up um, uh, that at the moment um, we've got it right. To be honest with you, it's not the temperature haven't dropped that much at the moment, so um, the infrareds wouldn't be wouldn't be used a, a huge amount more. But what we've found is basically that any time that the air temperature drops below six degrees, um, from all of the research that we've carried out with DCU, that um, we see growth significantly slow down. So um, we, we would set the rig up that any time the air temperature drops below six degrees, the heaters will kick in. So it's very, very much um, sort of temperature related, air temperature related. Yeah, and uh, there's the sensation in the industry that when you have, for Sorry, example, Jeremy. Can I yeah. also ask that to, to Mr. Moot? I think because you have yeah. in Munich, you easily have F minus 10. Uh, so we, when we tested the first winter, uh, we were speaking to uh, Christian Dinauer, your, Dinauer, your head groundsman, and, and asked how it was going. He said, yeah, great, but we're not saving a lot of energy because we are uh, putting so much more heat in than we can do with the HPS. But at the same time, you saw a lot better balance and, and results, right? With, uh, yes. But, but 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 we need a, a minimum of temperature of of eight degrees. Yeah, yeah. And and, and this is also um, something we we get easy with the conventional light. Yeah. But if the temperature is less than eight uh, eight eight degrees, we, we use uh, infrared yeah. with uh, with our LED lighting. Yeah. Okay. And also in, in the winter, we, we tested it. If we, we can make higher temperatures with with LED, but then you can discuss the sustainability. Yeah. We also can can produce uh, 14, 15, 16 degrees. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we need a, a lot of energy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, the, but the quality will be better. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We uh, we we need to. Uh, move on i think from this first part we we can conclude that uh i think if you look from a from uh, the perspective of growing grass uh then uh having the led plus the infrared is is superior and much more versatile obviously there's there's practical and investment uh related uh topics as well that uh, make it a, a a difficult decision and and 
hence what we already said, make it a very custom decision for, for every single stadium. I think from a growing perspective, we all agree that it offers many, many, many benefits. But uh, there's, there's, there's more things uh, than just the growing uh, on its own. Um, interesting to continue on this in, in the second part and also touching a bit on, on other things that you, Stuart, you already touched on. Uh, the fact that if you would go for a new system now, it will most likely be HPS in your situation. That exactly highlights what we've already been mentioning in specific for every stadium. But it's nice to, to, to learn from you in the second part also what you do a bit more and also at the Allianz Arena with data to, uh, to uh, optimize their lighting hours. But before that, Stuart, it's time for your uh, this or that. Well, the, uh, the, the idea is simple, Stuart. You've seen it with Mr. Moots. Uh, Xavi, I can assure you, uh, we will not mention in this or that the time that Bayern Munich uh, defeated uh, Barcelona with A2. Okay? We will, stop, we, will stop, <laughs> we will stop mentioning that. Okay. Stuart, are you ready? Yeah. Excellent. Here we go. Guinness oh. or right? Guinness. Guinness. All right. Good. Snow or a heat wave? Heat wave. Heat wave for you would be... Plus 18 degrees, or yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> pedestrian or ride on? We have our criminals back again. Oh, pedestrian, pedestrian. LED or HPS? Oh, this one, oh. This one you can explain later. Go I on, can, oh. you have to choose HPS. Okay, interesting. Uh, MU360 or LU440? You've used both 440. Okay, that was an easy one. Hurling or Gaelic football? I don't understand anything about both, but you do? Uh, hurling. Hurling, okay, interesting. Follow common practice or do your own research? I think that last one is a very simple one. Yeah, research. Yes, excellent, okay. Very interesting. Uh, well, to, to touch on that a, a little, uh, Stuart, that last one, uh, doing your own research, you can uh, clarify your choice for HPS uh, later. Um, doing your own research, Obviously, by own research, we mean not you, just you on your own, but you together with, with the university and um, also uh, other companies involved. Um, is that something which is an ongoing thing also when it comes to, to lights and, and, and other parts? Yeah, it's, it's probably slowed down a little bit now, to be honest with you, because I think we've found the results and it's, you know, the research has been going on for yeah. two and a half, three years, really. So um, from the results that we've found that, um, yeah, we, we've moved on to, to trialing um, different different LED um, lighting rigs that are out there. So um, we've seen, you know, we've had some, some really good results, um, but I think it comes down to, for us, that's, Really, you know, like I've said before, it, 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 the size of the rig um, and the amount of rigs that you need, um, the, the, the sort of disadvantages at the moment would outweigh um, uh, would outweigh sort of using the, the, the HPSs, you know. So I think for us, um, I do believe, like I've said, that, um, that down the line that there will be LED technology covering pitches. Um, but I think, you know, there just needs to be some more development on the size of the rigs and the pra practicality. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I think, to be honest, uh, from, from our point of view, uh, we are convinced 100% uh, about LED technology and its benefits. That's, that's been discussed already. Uh, yeah. We The good thing is, is that if, if you look at, uh, and, and we'll get to Gary uh, in a few minutes, but uh, if you look at Tottenham Hotspur, where we see uh, a full pitch being done with HPS and when it's in the car park, a full pitch being done with LED uh, with great results. When we look at Bayern Munich already for quite a while, uh, the, the results they get with, with their LED lights, uh, same thing in Wolfsburg. Uh, our customers around the world, also in, in, from Hong Kong to, to uh, New York Red Bulls. Uh, they all love the versatility and, and the, the possibilities it gives them. So there's, in my eyes, there's no concern or doubt about the, the, the technology itself. It's more like you say, the, the practicality that needs yeah. to yeah. progress. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've both mentioned air temperature and how, how important that is. Um, there's perhaps a perceived impression in the industry that if you have undersoil heating, you don't necessarily need infrared lamps. How have both of you seen that with, with your trials and tribulations? Uh, I'd, 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 I'd have to disagree with that, to be honest with you, because uh, we find that um, the, the grass plant requires certain air temperatures for growth, you know, so um, unless you're going to 
you know, sort of cover the canopy with, um, you know, looking, I suppose you could look at a tent situation, there's tents out there, they work exceptionally well because they're holding the heat in there, you know, so you've got the light and the heat. Um, uh, so, you know, you could look at things like germination sheets and hold some temperature in the, in, in you know, above the canopy. But for me, I, I just don't see how that um, uh, you're going to get the growth with without the air temperatures, to be honest with you. Um, so, um, turning your undersoil heating off, um, uh, I, I just, yeah, I, I don't see, you need a combination of both soil temperatures and air temperatures for, for grass growth. You know, that's, it's fairly common sense that. So, and to say that a light is gonna, yeah, I think you will see some form of growth, but you're not gonna get the, the best results in the depth of winter without a combination of the two. So do you, do you think that uh, with the, well, without using the infrared, we can reduce some costs? That's uh, obvious, but using the infrared do you really think you mr muth and, and and Stuart, that we can reduce costs compared to hps um, i think it will be very difficult to, to 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 save costs if you want to have the effect of more quality through the led uh, light i think yeah, this I think is that... uh, yeah yeah I, I think Daniel, maybe you can touch on that. You've you've obviously uh, guided the the trial we did in uh, Hong Kong with the LED thirty five. Uh, I think there it's a bit of a different story, right? Yeah, I think climate really plays a part in that, Javi. Your, your question. Um, I think the warmer the temperature or the warmer the climate, um, the, the greater the energy savings because that infrared is not necessarily needed. Hong Kong's a, a perfect situation where. Perhaps there's only three or four weeks of the year where infrared is actually needed for optimal grass growth. Um, so then essentially energy, energy savings are, are quite substantial. Um, and certainly in a, maybe even a climate like, like Singapore where no infrared is needed, then certainly the, the more sustainable option would be LED. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's really a climatic uh, situation, that, that question. Yeah. 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 And grass species is often important as well for C3, C4 grasses. That's yeah, yeah also a great point, Frank. Obviously. Regarding that, that's a, that's a question for maybe Daniel and Stuart, both of you. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that, for example, in Spain, we have uh, several groundsmen which uh, do transition from C3 to C4? Do you think that they could achieve to keep the C4 all year round with using LED plus infrared? I'll let you, you go first. Not an easy one, but. Yeah, for me, it, it purely depends on uh, you know how, how temperatures your air temperatures are going to drop. You know, um, would that would that you know plant be able to survive in those those le le sort of low temperatures? How much how much more heat are you going to get from the infrared? Um, uh, and then you're looking at potentially you know huge energy costs um, by having to you know run the the uh, the infrareds all the time. You know, so mm, nice to go for warm season in Dublin, Stuart. <laughs> Not to, I mean, we've grown, we've grown some smooth stalk in the uh, in the turf farm and had good yeah. results, but uh, yeah, it took it took about um, a year to get it established. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a fascinating subject, Javi. Obviously, typically C four grasses require more light than that of a C three grass, but I think, like Stuart said, it's more the minimum temperature that's the the issue. Um, we we see warm season grasses sitting happily in 40 degrees here in Melbourne and, and functioning quite well. Um, but it's that minimum temperature that's really the, the issue, I think. Mm. Mr. Mutz, um, how do you work in the Allianz Arena? Obviously, you, you need your undersoil heating a lot. Uh, do you uh, manage that in combination with the data you get from the portal and the analyzer to also uh, manage the undersoil heating in combination with the lighting or, or how is that done? Yes, of course. It, it is a, a com combination of uh, of both uh, both systems, and and also uh, we we know like you do it also. It, uh, you don't need every day, every hour, full power with uh, with the soil heat and and uh, on top with with the light. You have to to find a balance to use the systems, and you have to find a, a limit for using systems but but overall we we want to have um, the same temperature at the soil all over the time yeah 
Um, what Daniel also mentioned in his presentation was about, uh, and, and what we gave a few examples, uh, that obviously regardless of the light source LED or HPS, well, you've been using uh, both, you, you are using both, uh, we see a lot of benefits in optimizing lighting hours with, with data and, and common sense. How does that work for you, Mr. Mood, at the Allianz Arena? Is that a, a big topic? Yes, it's a, it's a topic. Um, not not a uh, not the biggest one, biggest one, but for us it's it's very important uh, to talk to you and, and to to your to experts and uh, to to get a consulting and to optimize the systems, also the soil heat heating and and, and the lights uh, per house. Yeah, Stuart. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to I'd, to be honest with you, I'd, I'd have to totally agree with Jurgen there. Um, we'd, we'd work on exactly the same sort of principles. To be honest with you, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, another last one uh, that was addressed by uh, Daniel was the energy source. Um, we've seen the example of Weather, Weather Bremen. They've been using uh, solar panels for a long time. Um, Stuart, uh, are there any initiatives uh, in, 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 in Croke Park to look into that or... Not, not massively. No, it's been. It has been. Um, there's, there's been a little bit of research into that, but um, there's not. Um, uh, I think the, the stadium's quite old, so to introduce that, um, it would be, it'd be fairly, you know, costly. Um, it's actually how, how, you know, how you configure everything. So, um, so it's not, not something that's in the pipeline with, with Pro Park at the moment. I guess the sun has to shine too for uh, solar panels to be useful. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, it's not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that, that, that's that's a curious thing. Germany is, I think, is the country with more solar panels in Europe and Spain. That we have sun enough, we have uh, nearly nothing. So that's curious, huh? How it works? Yeah, yeah. I think the German people are innovative, Chavi. Maybe. <laughs> no, I think. What do you mean, uh, Mr. Mut? You 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 can maybe uh, confirm that. But from what we know, energy rates are really high in Germany. So there's, I think. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And energy rights are uh, quite higher than in the Netherlands, and in, uh, so so we we, we need um, a lot of money for it, but we, we get it back with a higher quality of the pitch. Uh, yeah. That's that's a re resume, uh, my my personal yeah. resume. Okay, and and any initiatives of solar panels or wind energy, green energy? That's already quite uh, common in Germany, I think, right? To use green energy. Yes, and, and we, we have our own uh, photovoltaic uh, on, on, on the roof of our, on our, our new uh, parking house. And, and we want to enlarge uh, the, the green energy also um, on, on, on our area, but, but perhaps also outside. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Well, uh, I think like uh, Daniel said before, uh, we can talk for, uh, for hours on, on, on this topic. Um, and uh, I would also like to say if there's any uh, more questions from the audience later on, feel free to, to send us an email or, and uh, get in touch with us. Um, for now, I think uh, we, we move on. Uh, it's time to, to go to London, uh, to Tottenham Hotspur. But I, yeah, I think it's been really interesting to have your opinion, both from, from a different angle, uh, different, different type of, of stadiums, different usage, uh, different perspectives, but still with the same thorough thorough research that you've done uh, involving universities as well and also testing out uh, multiple companies so uh, that's that's really great to have had your uh, opinion on this so now we move on to mr gary mr. lee <laughs> Gary, welcome. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yes, very well. Thank you. It's good to see you again. You were in one of our first uh, uh, SGL live sessions. Uh, that was uh, a great one. I believe it was on the TC50s, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, you can see in the background, I believe. But to, yeah. today, um, yeah, just down there, yeah. Yeah, it's more about the, the, the bigger picture. As I said already in the, in the introduction, I don't know whether you've seen it, but... Um, we should have been at your wonderful, iconic stadium already last March with our masterclass. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like so so many events that got postponed um, due due to COVID, um, 
we will be back hopefully March 21, but who knows? Uh, yeah. but it, it's it's wonderful that you can already give us a uh, yeah sneak preview of that um, and 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 show us around at your pitch and also what we've discussed, Gary, during the the, the talk is that there is a specific solution. Uh, especially when it comes to LED uh, for, for each stadium, uh, even more so than with HPS. And, and your stadium is, is the perfect example where we use HPS and uh, a few meters left or down, I would say, in the car park. Uh, there's no HPS, but there's LED only for, for good reasons, of course, which we will, we will see later. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's a great example. And I think Altogether, I've, I've I've only been there a few times so far. I'd love to uh, go more, but I have to go into a, a two-week quarantine first. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but the stadium itself is wonderful. The the integrated solution that's been installed, uh, a real piece of art, I would say. But I give the floor to you now to to show us around and, and give us your uh, your thoughts on how it's been going so far. Absolutely. Hang on, just let me uh, turn you around so you can actually see what we're looking at. So yeah, so we yeah we obviously um, we've got we've got the uh, the world's first integrated system. Um, we went for HPS. Well, as as you said, we've got HPS and um, LED. Um, really, it's two different things we're after. Obviously, out here on the pitch, we've gone for HPS because we're looking for something slightly more intensive. You know, we need, we need quicker recovery times. You know, obviously not this year due to COVID, but we were due to have like rugby and maybe rugby league in and amongst you know, a full Premier League season. Um, whereas in the car park, it is just literally about keep, you know, just keeping the grass ticking over while, while it's parked in there. We're not actively trying to grow it. We're just trying you don't to give need it either. just a... No, exactly, yeah. And because of the proximity to the um, LED lights, yeah, um, we, yeah we, we couldn't have that heat. And also I think with HPS out here as well, if you look at the structure, obviously it spans 70 meters. Yeah. Um, obviously, with LED, you'd probably have to have more units and, yeah. and stuff on the rig. Whereas here, with uh, as you can see, you can see they're fairly well spread out. There's only three lines on each rig. And yeah. when we've got all six out, it gives us 110 meters in length of, of light, essentially. Yeah, this is uh, a good point you mentioned, uh, Gary. Uh, for those of you who, who don't know the system or have never seen it, uh, Google it. Uh, go to our website. You will see some videos. It's, it's really impressive. What it is, it's it's a fully integrated system coming from behind the goals, uh, and there's not a single beam or wheel on the grass, so it's a full uh, width of the pitch that is uh, spent. And like you say, Gary, that was also one of the challenges. Uh, first of all, uh, HPS was was fine because there was heat required uh, uh, when the pitch was out in the stadium, and second of all, from an engineering point of view, LED would have been even more a challenge. And I can tell you that. Uh, SCX, uh, the, the company that did your sliding pitch and was also the engineering partner on this project, um, already had a real challenge to engineer this. So um, yeah, it's 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 a great structure and, and yeah, it, it's in, impressive now. But I can tell you when you're there, it's even even more impressive. To you, it must become uh, normal now, Gary, or not? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, yeah. it's nice for us operationally because obviously we don't have to move them to like do cutting and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I guess the other bonus as well of, of using the HPS and obviously, as you can see, they're quite well spread out. And, but where these, live, uh, where these rigs actually live is only in a nine metre void in the stand. Yeah. So though we, when they're all um, folded out, obviously they do the whole length of the pitch, but when they're actually put away, they, they, fold, they all fold into nine metres, basically. Yeah, that's great. Also, uh, on, on this topic that we've been discussing today, sustainability, from that point of view, uh, what might be interesting to know is that all these lights are, are clustered in sections, relatively small sections, and they can all be uh, uh, controlled individually. So with all the measurements we are doing with the analyzer system uh, and all the data we are gathering on the portal, uh, Gary can run his rigs on a fully automatic mode where it's exactly calculated how much light is needed and which section should be on uh, for a certain number of hours or not. Um, so that's also, like we said already, there's there's many ways of being sustainable. Hi, Gary. Good to have you. Hi, yeah, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. So I thought you might be so, missing me. Thanks for that. That's that's a very interesting part. Like I said, if you want to see more of this, uh, also uh, Google SDL integrated system or go to our website um, or Tottenham pitch system will will get you there as well to see some videos. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, what 
not a lot of people have seen so far and, and what's not uh, heavily uh, advertised on social media either is the car park situation. Um, while Gary walks over, I'll <laughs> explain. Uh, it's a 10 minute walk, right, Gary? Hey, uh, two or three minutes. No, no. Um, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, I think many of you will know, most of you will know because it is quite famous. Uh, the Spurs Stadium has a fully sliding pitch. It slides in uh, three sections. And uh, because we're in the middle of London, uh, it cannot slide out into a car park or into an open field, but it slides into the car park. Uh, what, what happens then is when it, the pitch, the natural grass pitch slides into the car park, there's an artificial pitch underneath in the stadium ball to play NFL. So this, this stadium can uh, transfer into a fully uh, designated NFL stadium within how many hours, Gary? You're not hearing me. Well, he'll, he'll tell us later. So For it, NFL, we did it in about three and a half days. Okay. Uh, um, we're, at, we're aiming to do it a lot quicker next time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and then obviously the natural grass pitch is in the car park and that can sometimes be for, for uh, 10 days, two weeks. Um, so obviously we needed to find a solution to, like Gary said, keep that grass alive, which was actually one of the first slogans of SGL, but keep that grass alive while, <laughs> it, was, uh, while it was in the car park uh, so that it would come out in, in the same condition as that it came in. Uh, so you see here we are in the car park, uh, now it's used as a car park, whenever the natural grass pitch slides in obviously the cars are gone uh, and then uh, the entire pitch uh, over 7000 square meters is, is lit at the same time by the LED system. So this is the largest LED system in, in the world used for, uh, for pitch lighting, grass lighting, uh, quite spectacular and, and quite innovative obviously because you can imagine that growing grass in an environment like this. Um, uh, well, Gary has to cut the grass while lying, right? Yeah, that's it, yeah, on my knees. Yeah, yeah, on his knees. <laughs> so you see here that, that the space, obviously it's a car park. Uh, so it's very uh, uh, restricted in terms of height. When the pitch is in, at some point, Gary, there's only a few inches or, or 20 yeah, so Yeah, so if you imagine that, that this, was, this was put in or it was designed sort of after the, the stand had been designed. So the reason it splits is to get around the beams you can see in front of me just here. And then um, obviously we've got these cross members. So in these places it can go down to like, you know, maybe like 12 inches and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you through um, so before we go to the LED, just a few of the other systems. So up here, this is uh, what we use to push air across it to, um, to keep it dry and just keep the air moving. Obviously it's quite a, sort of humid environment as well so that these also dehumidify it um yeah on the on the floor there these are the these are the rails that it um, travels in on yeah and then obviously then if we come into this uh lovely pink area we've got uh we've got our led system yeah and obviously no infrared you mentioned uh there gary no no we um yeah we we obviously when it's in here it's a huge thermal mass that's in here so it does get quite warm in here anyway and actually, we do, we we do we can control the temperature as an average over the whole thing. We've got like eight sensors in which work out an average. So we, obviously, we're trying we're we're trying to slow down the growth while it's in here because we can only cut it using robotic mowers. That's what these cables are up here for. Um, but obviously, they can't collect, so we don't obviously want that much organic going back onto it over the two week period. So 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 you ideally you want to. Uh, after let's say a week or 10 days you want to drive it back in the stadium in the exact same state uh, nothing nothing worse but also not with a lot of growth happening or, or whatever yeah exactly I mean we, we obviously we, we, we use like a PGR as well to regulate the growth um, but yeah obviously our, big, our biggest thing in here is obviously um, you know we're in an indoor environment we're bringing a big thermal mass in that's wet and it's, you know, it's hot. So obviously we're trying to keep disease pressure down. That's why we've got all these other systems in place. Yeah. Um, so that's probably our, that's our biggest worry is getting disease. And that's why we did put so much infrastructure in here. And then, yeah. and then, and then it's just literally, I mean, um, I can't remember the exact figure, but the, the micro moles that we get uh, from the uh, PAR sensors in here are literally just enough to, just enough for the grass plant over a 24 hour period. All right. Yeah. Do you leave the um, lights on twenty four seven, Gary, when it's in there? 
Uh, we don't. We um we we do turn them off for um you know sort of, sort of five or six hours a day. Just right. you know, just you know, it's sort of it's it's just to give it that sort of natural cycle. Yeah, yeah. As it yeah. were. Okay, very good. And just just to make it clear, obviously you've now turned only a section on, but uh, normally it's it's almost that full car park that we see now. Where yeah, yeah, yeah. Where LED must be. Yeah, this, uh, the, 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 the wall you're looking at back there, the pitch literally slides to within a meter of that, so it's yeah. literally the whole car park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, very impressive. Excellent. That's uh, thank you. Quite interesting, I think. Right, Mister Moot. Was that ever considered for the Allianz Arena back then to have a sliding pick? <laughs> Perhaps if we will play any concerts in the Allianz Arena, we, yeah. we will think over. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, very good. Well, Gary, thanks a lot for that. Much appreciated. No worries. Uh, well, uh, again, to all the SGL customers, uh, if you do want to see this real life, then uh, sign up for the uh, the SGL Masterclass and. Um, then uh, you can have a, a live view, hopefully, at one point. Good. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Gary. Uh, no worries. Before we uh, uh, finalize this today, uh, I would like to run through a short summary with you. What have we discussed? What have we learned? Well, I think it's been mentioned over and over again. Uh, every stadium is different and needs its own solution. We've been saying that for 15 years already. Uh, but in this case, uh, when with the LED technology, involved it's it's even more so the case uh it really needs custom calculations and and solutions uh mainly also because of that temperature aspect like we've been saying today temperature is often underestimated and it's a big part in in that growing uh, uh process and and to be able to balance that uh, and and to be able to operate it individually uh, is is a real benefit so i think it was really interesting what mr moot highlighted that uh with LED and especially also Mr. Mook knows it from a stadium perspective, when you look at the floodlights or, or at the office lights, then obviously when you go to LED, the focus is on sustainability and, and, and uh, reducing energy. Also with, with the, the, the grass lighting that is uh, part of the focus, but it's nice to see that Mr. Mood also says quality was our biggest focus and we see a lot of benefits in that. So that's, uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, again, uh, our main message here today is that it's it's not simple it's not black and white there's not a standard solution for every stadium so if you're going to make that decision uh make sure you are well informed with the right calculations and and um uh, that you know what your goals are and that the system that you are investing into uh fulfills that that goals i think that's that's the main thing uh surprisingly on this topic i was expecting a lot of questions because it's always providing a lot of uh, discussion for a lot of discussion uh, we haven't had any, um, so um, that means, gentlemen, that you've all been extremely clear or completely unclear, but I, I go for the first one. I think you've all been extremely uh, clear. Uh, I think it was a really nice discussion. If there are any questions later on, uh, please uh, let us know, get in touch, and, and we can uh, help you get in touch with uh, Jürgen Moot, Stuart Wilson, or Gary. Uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to, to answer any questions that you might have. Or obviously, our experts, Xavi and Daniel, uh, uh, could answer your questions. Don't ask me anything. I, I don't know much. But um, yeah, excellent. I think it's been a really nice discussion. Gentlemen, I would like to thank you all. Uh, Jürgen Muth, uh, I know you are a very busy man, uh, especially uh, these times uh, uh, are, are, are challenging and very busy for you. So thank you for making the time available to, to join us today. Uh, it was a real pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you. Stuart, same for you. Uh, busy, uh, busy time of year with the lighting season started. So uh, I really, really appreciate it that you could make the time to, uh, uh, yeah, be available uh, to discuss and, and join in on this uh, session. And thanks a lot as well for your input and interesting insights. No problem at all. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. You're welcome. And Gary, uh, well, when when will we see you back? Second time already. It was great. I think you. Sorry. You can always start doing stadium tours uh, live yeah. uh, uh, online because you you did absolutely <laughs> fabulously. Uh, thanks for that. Um, no problem. We hope to see you again soon, and we hope absolutely to see you in real life uh, during the SGL masterclass. That would be great. So thanks again, Xavi. Pleasure yeah. as always. You did well. 
And Daniel, finally, great, great first session. Really thank well. You. Thank you very much. Uh, most of all, thank you everyone for, for joining us today. We had a uh, very high attendance, obviously, because of the, the great panel and, and the great topic. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it and, and learned something out of it. So uh, it will be very nice to see you again uh, next time on our next SGL live session. Thank you very much. Yeah.